Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, world. Hello, Kenya. My name is Jesse Aymon Ekoenaze, also known as Jesse Mab Jesse. You see, myself and beloved John um, have been friends for a while right now, and um, I happen to be his manager, and I usually help him to manage his shows and his bookings here in Nigeria, inclusive of his music, while he's home and abroad. And um, uh, sadly, we lost beloved John to a supposed uh, gas accident. Uh, it's just uh, myself and friends and family over here in Nigeria. We are concerned. We are concerned and uh, we want to know um, the truth. You see, um, in the stories that is going on around uh, Kenya right now, you know, it's heartbreaking. And that is the reason why I am doing this video because, you see, though beloved John is gone, but we can't do anything about it. We can't even question him. We don't even know what happened to him. And that is why I want the whole world to find out what I know and find out the loopholes that we've been finding out, you know, since I've heard this. And also, I got to hear about this uh, gas uh, explosion from a friend of the family. For... For privacy sake, I'm not going to mention the name of the family who told me, because as at the time I visited Kenya in November 2019 for their, uh, for their wedding, uh, I happened to be with these people, and I spent some quality time living in their house for some time, uh, while uh, beloved John and, uh, and his wife you know, went to the hotel to have their honeymoon. And after they got back, I was with them in their new house, which was at, at the river on Mombasa Road. You see, um, I've, been, I've lived in that house, and I know the setting of that house. I know every setting of that house. And I just want the whole world to understand that stories don't tally. I've been hearing, and I still, I've still been receiving messages from anonymous people telling me Things that you know, beloved John has also been talking to people about his way, about his 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 married married life, you know, and um, it's just so sad that uh, he had to pay with his own dear life, you know. Um, only a only um, a guilty soul will find these as accusations. I'm not accusing everybody and I'm not accusing anyone. But I just want Kenyans, Nigerians, and the whole world to understand this from my own point of view and from what everyone is talking about and find out why. Why, why, why? You see, Beloved John is a very smart person and he's not stupid. Though he's not a saint, but Beloved John is a very lovable person. He's a gentle soul. You cannot be around him and not love him. The only, you know, issue he had, you know, is going ahead with the dreams of trying to find happiness. I think that was his only, you know, uh, where he missed it. And uh, you see, when this friend of, of, of mine, where I stayed with in Kenya, told me about Beloved John and said uh, he was in a gas accident, I, I asked the question, who was with him? Who was with him? Immediately, I chatted up Ruth Matete. I called. She didn't pick up. So I chatted her. I said, please, what happened to John? And the next thing she said was, everything was OK. I said, I just heard he had an accident, a gas accident. The next thing she asked was, who told you? And immediately, I told her, oh, this was the person that told me. She only gave me a thumbs up. And she didn't say any other thing else which was around April the 2nd. I have the screen munchies of all this. And if you guys are in doubt, I can actually attach all this, you know, to, to, to this video, which I think I should. Uh, so immediately she found out that I knew about this gas accident. I, I, I inquired further, like, what's happening to John afterwards? I didn't get any response from, from Ruth or from whoever. Not until 
uh, yesterday, which was April 12th, where she called me and said, oh, Jesse, oh, my husband is gone. My husband is gone. And that was just it. And I asked the question again. When this gas accident happened, who was with him? Who was at home? Until our friend, Angie, who is a PA, now called, you know, picked up the phone again and said, yes, that both of them were in the house alone. Okay, so uh, I don't doubt that. You see, truth is, everyone is going to, you can come at me for whatever reason you have. I won't blame you. You see, celebrities in Kenya and all around the world are, you know, saying condolences and saying kind words to this, but I don't think some people are a saint either. You see, uh, beloved John's marriage was never rosy. Ruth Matete, you can look at me in the eyes and tell the whole world the truth. You were very violent with beloved John. You have stabbed him not once, not twice, not the third time. In fact, it so happened that as at the last time I knew about this stabbing thing that you tried to kill beloved John, I was there with you guys in at the river, you know, in a Great War Gardens. That is where your house was. And you guys had a fight, an argument, and you stabbed him. You almost killed him. And for those of you that are in doubt, I'm going to upload two of the audio files. Because when that thing happened, I recorded, I recorded the situation. I wanted to record video, but I knew that I was not going to have the time to start doing that. So I recorded the audio. So I recorded and I kept the phone in my pocket. While beloved John was fighting for his life, he beat, he beat up Ruth Matete to protect himself. He threw her out of the house. And eventually, I dragged Ruth. Ruth, you know what I'm saying is the truth. I dragged you from outside. I kept you in the other room. I brought you new clothes so that you can keep warm because that night was very cold. I brought you in. I gave you clothes. And I went to confront beloved John. I asked him, why did you do what he did? And the next thing he told me, I should leave you alone. Because why you've been like this. You've been like that for years. He has been managing that. And I asked him a question. If you have been managing this, why are you continuing to go on with this? Why are you going on with this marriage? And he said, you know, eh, he has managed it so far and eh, God is helping him. Well, where are you today? Where are you today? Six feet. You're dead. It hurt so much, you know, because we both had... Um, and heart to heart, we, I know the plans you had. I know what you wanted to do in ministry. You were so passionate about God and what you wanted to do for God and the kingdom of God. But it's just so unfortunate. You see, uh, Ruth might say, oh, myself and beloved John had a fight. We never had a fight. We had an argument because when I was coming to Kenya, uh, both of them were not really boxed up. They wanted me to come for their wedding. They wanted me to come and shoot their wedding and also act like his, as a best man. And I said, they have to choose one. Somehow, I was able to go with my camera gear and I went to Kenya. On getting there, they told me uh, I should use some of my own money that when I get there, I was gonna be refunded back before I get back to Nigeria. And I felt, I mean, it was the day I wanted to celebrate with them. So I had to just take it. I had some money in my account, which were not my money. I had to even make additional borrowings from some friends and families here, which made up for my flight ticket and for some of the costumes that I got for both the wife and the husband. And I did. Um, getting there, it now became an issue to pay back. Beloved just started telling me stories and stories that don't I see how things are here, that they're not as boxed up. But I like, you lied to me. Why would you do that? So what do I go back to Nigeria and tell those people that have borrowed money from that? How am I going to, you know, augment all that? Then you told me I should give you time. I should give you time. Even Ruth herself, you told me to give you guys time. You were going to pay back. You are going to do this. That you have programs coming up and you're going to use it to refund my money. 
so that I can refund it back to those people I, I owed. That was what prompted myself and beloved John to argue. And be, before that, beloved John wanted to come back to his family here in, in, uh, in, in Nigeria. He wanted to come and see his son and his daughter. Yes, for most of you that don't know, he has a son and a daughter. And one of, one of the things we, we shared was, why don't you come back to your first wife? And this is the same reason why beloved, anyone that speaks that to him, he, he shuts them out. And I can see why. Because if he tells it to Ruth, Ruth gets upset. Ruth is more, she's more interested in what people are saying about her than what, what is good for both herself and her husband. She cares too much about what the media is talking. She, she, it gets to her head. At some point, she was in and out of, of, of rehab. Uh, Mr. Ebel Munga, her father, knows about this. You know about this, that Ruth is, is she's wasted. Ruth has some psychological issues. Ruth is very wise. She looks as if she's, she can't hurt a fly, but Ruth... Oh, God. oh Jesus Christ. And when you now wanted to tell the elder brother what happened, you said Ruth, uh, uh, beloved John were, was rushed to the ICU unit because he had an appendix. When you found out that that one would not hold ground, you now later opened up to him and started telling him he had a gas explosion accident. Ruth, the set of people that were trying to get in contact with beloved John, you shut them out. You were only telling people he's doing fine. You sent a broadcast and message to people so that you can solicit for money and start using baby, your baby, as, as an alibi to get funds and say he needed money for surgery. There are certain things for me that were not right. First, your husband had an accident. You didn't tell anybody. You didn't tell his family. You didn't inform his family. You didn't give accurate information on what led to what to his family here in Nigeria. You didn't, you didn't give accurate information on his health status part time to his family here in Nigeria. Not until the death of beloved John. And you see, during that argument the other night, the other night when you guys had that fight while I was in Kenya, Ruth Matete, Luxo, you told me, tell your brother to go back to Nigeria. Tell your brother to go back to Nigeria because you were done with this marriage. You were done with this marriage. Or else, if he doesn't go, it will look like an accident. I guess eventually this is the accident you were talking about. It didn't make sense then, but now it made sense now. You know what? I only wanted to open you guys to these things. When I ask these questions, nobody, nobody to give me a direct answer. And I hope Ruth will come out right now and say the truth. I hope Ruth will come out and say what really happened. See, beloved John is not just, he can't just die like that. He said he had burns. He had, that, that burns of the picture that I saw cannot kill beloved John. The picture is too gross, but that, that picture cannot hurt beloved John. Perhaps I'm going to put the picture over here so you guys can see. The picture cannot hurt, can, is not enough to kill beloved John. But you see, I leave it to you guys to decide. And I've been getting messages from Ruth's friend and saying they want to bury beloved John. I sent her a message, do not bury beloved John. There is a postmortem that was supposed to go ahead, you know, on Wednesday to, to really verify what is going on or what killed beloved John. If you bury beloved John without the real thing, Nigerians will hold Kenyans responsible. Now, it remains that now Ken Nigerians are not safe in Kenya. That's what you guys are trying to say right now. And if that is what the case is, then too bad. If we Africans cannot vouch for ourselves, is it what it's going to now become? That Kenyans are not welcome in our own country? Don't get me wrong. I enjoy Kenya. Kenya people are beautiful people. Kenyans are the most lovely people on earth. 
Kenyans are the ones that open their doors. I, 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 I bought it in Matatu. That's what you guys call boss. I bought it in Matatu. I was going to, to, to Ngong Road or something or wherever it's called, to a church one time to worship. And I didn't know how else to go. I bought it in Matatu. I didn't know how to speak Swahili. But I told them where I was going to. People were the ones vouching for me, oh, you've not gotten there. They were telling the conduct, the bus conductor that, oh, I was going to get highlight here, I was going to highlight here. You guys are lovely people. And I just want to put it to you guys. There's something that is not making sense. Find the truth for yourself. Find the truth for yourself. Mr. Ibel Munga, I respect you so much. I love you so much. You know that. You, you can attest to this thing, that your daughter actually has something to hide you know but right now I just want um, you know this video to go out and uh, I pray that justice you know is being held for beloved John because this is not just natural at all this guy had so much to give I'm just gonna pen down here if anybody wants to ask me anything I think you should you already know who to ask the questions don't ask me. Ask the person that is involved, that was there alone, that ran out, instead of helping the husband to cover the burns, that ran out to meet neighbors. Your husband is on fire, you ran out to meet neighbors to look for help. Does that even make any sense? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to beg you. I beg you in the name of God and what you love the most. We all just need answers for beloved John. God bless you.